So thank you for joining us here today on windsurftoots.com. Uh, this particular video is not going to be uh, how to do something specific. This is one of two videos that we are going to do on TCP IP protocol stack hardening. So <clears throat> we will be working with the registry in order to harden the TCP IP security stack. There's a number of vulnerabilities and exploits that can be performed against the system that are possible simply because of the design of the TCP IP protocol stack and not necessarily because you've had a faulty implementation of Windows um, because you have left some sort of patch uh, undone things like that uh, a good system administrator should know this um, but it is not always brought up in a timely manner <clears throat> so what I want to do is I just want to cover some of the theory of why we will doing be doing some of this registry hardening before we actually go in and show you uh, how to harden the registry so let's get started here so basically <clears throat> because of the age of the TCP IP security um, or the TCP IP stack in Windows 2003 you can find a lot of information out there on extra registry keys things that you can do to harden the stack with Windows 2008 there is not as much information out there because the stack that Microsoft has implemented is new. What you'll find is you'll find a lot of information on Microsoft's um, TechNet site but <clears throat> it will actually say that maybe it's out of date. So one of the main references that we'll be pulling our resources from is an article called Harden the TCP IP Stack and it's from the MSDN uh, Microsoft site in its article number FF648853 if you want to take a look and look that up. <clears throat> what you will see when you actually look at this article is that you get this warning. This content is outdated and is lo no longer being maintained. It's provided as a courtesy for individuals who are still using these technologies. So we're kind of put into a quandary here. Does this mean that the TCP IP stack on Windows Server 2008 does not need to be hardened? Um, <clears throat> there's nowhere that Microsoft has released any information saying that no, these practices do not need to be taken. And in fact, if you look at Symantec's uh, website, they actually have an article called Hardening the TCP IP stack to avoid sin attacks and this is something that we're going to be looking at now if you notice on this article if you choose to look this up this was published uh, November 2nd in 2010 so this absolutely would be applicable to Microsoft Windows Server 2008 in R2 <clears throat> I would rather take a preventative measure as long as it is not going to negatively impact performance and make no mistake some of these measures will impact performance if it, they're not tuned to your network but it's better than to have a denial of service attack succeed or it's better than having a person using some open service available on your network to penetrate your network so let's take a look at through some of these things that we're gonna do <clears throat> the first thing and I'm sorry for coughing I'm got a little bug the first thing that we're gonna do is disable IP source routing <clears throat> IP so source routing does have some limited uh, good use but in the overall picture of things, IP source routing is bad, bad, bad. Um, I'm going to go back to this. A little bit of information about IP source routing. <clears throat> so usually everybody knows that routers should route traffic through your network. So if you have a border router and a packet comes in and you, let's say you have three uh, separate subnets that that router can route traffic to, and maybe you want only to route traffic to subnet A. Well, a, a source routed packet could actually say, no router, route me to subnet B or route me to subnet C, overriding the default routing tables. <clears throat> Just so you know, the, uh, source routing is actually enabled by default on Cisco devices. This is bad. <laughs> if you want to disable source routing on your Cisco devices, if you're familiar with it, you go to the global uh, config menu, uh, config T for those of you that are familiar with Cisco devices, and um, <clears throat> you can execute the no IP source route command. And this will disable uh, IP source routing on your Cisco devices. This is something that server admins and network admins should really pay specific attention to. If there is not an application on your network that is using source routing, you should turn it off. 
Um, you know, I would definitely recommend that you try this and monitor your applications. Again, you should have a lab environment. Go through the lab environment, simulate some traffic, uh, take a look and see what disabling source routing, uh, what that impact is on your environment. And if you can live without it, turn it off. Uh, <clears throat> the next thing is, there's a lot of systems now on networks that are multi-homed. We want, and multi-homed being that they are connected to more than one subnet. So let's say an example of a multi-homed network would be you have a web server that is on your DMZ and then instead of your traffic going through a secondary firewall, you have a, a secondary network interface that connects directly maybe to an SQL server or something like that and the system would re would lie on two different subnets that is an example of of a multi home system <clears throat> now we want to make sure that our systems are not routing traffic between that network so we don't want a packet coming in on our internet in our DMZ interface and then being able to route let's say to a database server or some other infrastructure servers out on a private um, subnet so we want to make sure that we're disabling this as well <clears throat> this is really where we're gonna start talking about maybe some of the more common things that we would want to protect against and this will specifically deal with denial of service attacks so <clears throat> the TCP IP protocol when a client wants to establish a connection with a over TCP IP they have what's called the three-way handshake and you can think of it as if a customer was to walk into a store and me the client says to the the storekeeper hello how are you the storekeeper says I'm well thank you what can I do for you today then the customer would say well I would like you to do my dry cleaning or I would like a loaf of bread whatever it is <clears throat> the TCP IP three-way handshake works in a similar manner the client initiates the session with the TCP IP server the server will then respond back to the client and where the exploitation comes of the TCP IP protocol stack is when the client does not finish that third phase of the handshake and so what that does is if you have a lot of clients not finishing that third phase of the handshake then you can be vulnerable to uh, a denial of service attack and it could bring down your system <clears throat> so there's a couple of features that we're going to be looking at the SYNAC protect and that's kind of an on or off TCP max ports exhausted and TCP max ports half open and then TCP half max half open retried these are some things that you are going to um, need to put into your registry so where will these things uh, be set in your registry <clears throat> all of these keys will need to, need to be added to the H key local machine system current control set services TCP IP and TCP IP version 6 parameters there's there's two registry keys one for the TCP IP version 4 which is just the TCP IP key and the TCP IP 6 um, sub key so we'll, you'll need to perform these on both sets of registry keys <clears throat> so the uh, first key that you'll need to enter in this parameters key is synac protect now when you're gonna an enter this in it's gonna be a D word value um, don't worry about it this is just to tell you what we're doing we're gonna actually have the video to completely show you how to set this up and the recommended value is two so what that recommended value means is that you are essentially going to be turning on this synac protect feature um, and, and then what we'll have is a couple other options that uh, will specify parameters when this synac protect option is enabled the next value that we're going to be talking about is TCP max ports exhausted so again this is going to be a D word value and Microsoft recommends a value of five when wanting to harden a server and what that value means is how many unanswered uh, three-way handshakes we're gonna have going on so really in, in a normal working environment you should not have open TCP IP handshakes the client will say hello server 
the server will say what can I do for you and then the client will say this is what you could do for me very straightforward process you should not be having a lot of these values um, a lot of these third phase of the the handshake left so what Microsoft recommends here is that you only allow five uncompleted um, SYNAC handshakes and that is uh, a value specified in this TCP max ports exhausted and the the options here range from zero to 65,535 <clears throat> so the TCP max half open basically is another D word value and what this is going to do it is the threshold of TCP IP connections that can be left in the SYN received state so again this has a little bit more to do with with the network side versus the server side but essentially what Microsoft is recommending here is a value of 500 <clears throat> and you can see the valid ranges are 100 and again 65,535 so essentially <clears throat> the difference between these two uh, this will kind of kick um, I'm sorry let me go back this will start to kick on that SYNAC protect mechanism okay uh, and then this is the total amount of TCP max half open or or half open TCP IP connections that the system will allow in general so that's a specified difference so five connections until these um, SYNAC denial of service protections are started and 500 is the total amount of values that the system will hold open now this is <clears throat> how many half open connections are we going to try to reinstate so essentially this will say okay we had five connections that are half open we've enabled the protection mechanism on our system will only allow a total of 500 open um, not completed connections total on the system and this uh, TCP max half open retried is how many times or how many connections we will try to uh, keep going and complete so that is the end of, of the this small kind of conceptual overview I hope that you found it informative um, again we're going to be actually showing values and how we're going to complete these tasks within the registry but this is not something that you should just jump jump into in your registry and start doing it is something that you should be looking at your traffic you should be looking at the connection types um, the, do you have clients for some reason if your network infrastructure is is not cohesive and, and is not um, healthy do you have drop packets do you have drop sessions so these are things that you're gonna to have to pay attention to and make decisions about in your own network but in the next video we'll actually show you how to implement these and they really recommend that these are implemented on internet facing type services so your web services your DNS services your email services so please stick around thank you for joining us and please check out the uh, follow-up video that we'll have online short shortly here on windserve2.com